Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of headlines about the number of Western companies that have left the Russian market. Well, today I want to talk about German companies and despite all the rhetoric and Russophobia from German politicians that many of them are actually still working in Russia. I mean, according to the German embassy in Moscow, they announced that there are currently 1,200 companies formed with German capital for currently operating in Russia. Now, the German commercial attaché at the embassy in Moscow highlighted that the decision to remain in or exit the Russian market is at the discretion of the businesses in question. I mean, the decision to leave was largely influenced by the EU's anti-Russian sanctions, although there's a possibility that some companies are regretting their decision and may return. Now, the analyst community emphasises that German organisations are in interested in maintaining their share of the Russian market, which they still see as offering significant potential. I mean, in addition to German companies, uh, firms from France and Italy also are maintaining a major interest in Russia. It appears to be only the British that appear to have left completely, apart from me, of course. But that's probably because they've gone out of business at home. Now, which German companies are currently operating in Russia? Well, despite the sanctions that the European Union has regularly imposed, 14 by now, on Russia since 2014, businesses from Russia continue to operate. I mean, there have been a number of high-profile German companies exiting Russia, and these include Siemens Power Machines, the car manufacturers BMW, Mercedes and Volkswagen, and many others with not so high a profile have actually stayed. Now, it's worth noting that prior to this special operation happening in 20, 000, uh, 2022, about 3,000 German companies were operating in Russia. I mean, but that still represents around a, a 2,000 company reduction compared to back in 2011, when there were 6.3 thousand. Now, the primary reasons for the departure of the companies are the restricting restrictions imposed on Russia and the threat of new measures from Washington or Brussels. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, and further develop it. And this can be done by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for actually watching. Now, the problem with sanctions is there's obviously logistical challenges, and those related to that, to that further complicate the situation. I mean, for example, the large sea transport carriers have declined to deliver containers to Russia. Some suppliers are reluctant to send goods to Russia without 100% advance payment, and the situation has been further complicated by restrictions that also affect cross-border payments for actual transportation. I mean, payments in euros frequently fail to go through or are made with significant delays, and that's as a result of the additional checks introduced by EU banks in line with the sanctions regulations. I mean, ultimately, German companies are concerned about their so-called reputation and uh, at home they're aware that their involvement in Russia will not remain con confidential and may be portrayed in, in the media particularly negatively uh, as supporting Russia's actions in Ukraine when it's just a matter of business. I mean, a recent example was a programme by the German TV channel SWR and that illustrates this. It's, it reports... Over 300 industrial machines manufactured at German enterprises were delivered to Russia in 2023. Now, the program states that these computer-controlled machines could be used for a variety of purposes, including the possible production of ammunition. Yeah, you're right, of course. Now, according to SWR, the equipment is transported to Russia via Turkey or Kazakhstan. Now, they interviewed the manufacturers and they told the program that they were unaware of any sanctions violations that they had done and they comply with all the current relevant regulations. Now, despite the restrictions, the Russian market is still an attractive proposition for German companies 
although they get significant pressure back home, according to Alexander Kotov, who's a leading researcher at the Centre for German Studies at the Institute of Europe of the Russian Academy of Sciences. He says, primarily the opportunity to operate within the market is a significant draw. I mean, when the main foreign competitors continue in Russia, they're motivated by a desire to maintain their market position and revenues. Now, from another perspective, there's a concern that Russian companies may begin producing similar products to those, which could lead not only to a reduction in their market share, but also uh, export uh, back to their home country or other markets where they're involved. Now, in light of the current economic crisis, Germany companies view the Russian market as an opportunity to at least offset the negative market volume and revenue indicators at home in Germany. Plus, Russia has consistently represented a significant market opportunity for them. Now, the analyst doesn't rule out the possibility of new German companies entering sectors like the clothing in the near future. I mean, some major manufacturers are beginning to re-enter the Russian market. These include several major companies, as those in the footwear retail sector. Plus, this year, LIM Holding registered to Russian domains in the names of four large German fashion brands from the Ultimo Fashion Group retailers portfolio. The brands Smith & Soul, Milano, Italy, Heart Kiss, Elisa & Me have all been registered. Now, the Russian-German Chamber of Commerce reports that they've now we've got currently 1,200 German member companies operating within Russia. Now, there are other foreign businesses in Russia from uh, other EU countries, but Germany continues to represent Russia's most significant trade and economic partnership uh, in the, by the countries of the EU. I mean, in 2023, the trade turnover between Russia and Germany was still around 12.2 billion, so it's not ex you know, exactly nothing. It should be noted, however, that Germany is not the only country maintaining its business ties. But in terms of turnover, I mean, Russia's main partners in the European Union were the Netherlands, 9.9 .9 billion, Italy, 9.4 billion. I mean, its turnover with uh, exceeds 5 billion with Hungary, Belgium, Poland and France, plus Austria. And that represents the EU countries with the highest trade volumes. Now, many foreign companies, including those based in Europe, are still interested in doing business in Russia. I mean, according to the Vienna Institute of Economic Studies, over the past two years, only 9.5% of foreign companies have completely left Russia, and about 32% have reduced their activities. The rest, which is obviously more than 50%, just carry on. Now, the Institute does note that the outflow of foreign capital uh, from Russia has slowed significantly due to the gradual tightening of the regulatory barriers to exit in the country. I mean, notable examples of countries that have retained a presence in Russia include the French supermarket giant Oshan, Philip Morris and the German Metro. And the pharmaceutical sector companies such as Johnson & Johnson and Novartis have maintained their presence in Russia. Now, also, Forbes reports that the top 10 largest foreign companies in Russia included Japan Tobacco, Raffheisen and Nestle. Now, meanwhile, Italian and French companies are demonstrating strong interest in maintaining their presence in the, uh, the Russian market, according to Alexander Kotov. I mean, Italian companies are very active and maintain a significant market share in trade turnover. Italian businesses work in close collaboration with their Russian counterparts, plus the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry conducts regular briefings, he elaborated. Now, with regard to the Baltics and the Scandinavian dimension, it's notable there's been a significant departure from companies in this region. The main one, obviously, being the, Swiss, uh, the Swedish retail giant IKEA, which completely pulled out. I mean, there's only one remaining company from Poland. I mean, in terms of Italy, as of 2023, there were 300 Italian companies still in Russia, with one third of them having their own production facilities in Russia. Now, in an interview with his vestia, Vittoria Tombarini, who's president of the Association of Italian Entrepreneurs, <coughs> excuse me, 
has confirmed that companies from the Republic intend to continue and maintain their presence in Russia. He said the primary reason for their presence in Russia is the amount of financial gain and profits that they make. I mean, although in Italy there's an increasing level of pressure being placed on businesses that do operate in Russia, it's not having a major effect. Now, they're also obviously facing numerous claims and sanctions being imposed. How, at an official level, there seems to be a reluctance to address the issue as it's not a real priority. Now, in terms of France, a recent study by Yale University found that as of February 2024, 64 major French companies had maintained at least some of their operations in the country, and that includes Lactalis, Group Rocher, Group Lidoff, as well as Auchan, the supermarket giant, Total Energies and saint Gobain. Now, the French supermarket giant Auchan, which some of you may remember, was visited by Tucker Carlson on his visit to Moscow to interview Vladimir Putin, has stated its intention to continue to maintain its operations in Russia and Ukraine, citing the need to provide food and employment for local communities. Lactalis has taken a similar stance, maintaining it will continue to produce goods to feed the civilian population. The Russia Group has said it will maintain its presence in Russia and continue to employ its over a thousand Russian staff and its 350 stores. And that uh, uh, represents approximately 8% of its global sales. So that's the situation here in Russia. Keep watching because behind, besides the bullshit the um, Western media keep telling you, I'm going to tell you what's really going on in Russia. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button and making a small donation. Don't forget the comments section. I love to read your comments. I love to respond to your comments. I love just getting them. Thanks again and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.